Falernum is a must-have ingredient for any tiki enthusiast. It hails from Barbados and has been used in cocktails since at least the 1800s. Just by using a tiny bit, Falernum offers depth and an almost imperceptible spice that really balances out the sometimes cloyingly sweet and overly boozy tiki cocktails. There is no real definitive recipe for Falernum, but each recipe I've seen calls for overproof rum, sugar, lime, ginger, almond, and clove. For overproof rum, I recommend Ray and Nephew. It's widely available and has such a lovely tropical aroma that enhances the flavors of this homemade Falernum. For almonds, you will want to use blanched almonds that you can either make on your own or you can buy them. I'm opting for blanched and slivered almonds because they have more surface area for toasting, which will impart that delicious toasted almond flavor to the Falernum. Most recipes I've seen use a large quantity of cloves, but I find that the cloves have such a strong flavor and tend to overwhelm the Falernum. Eight cloves offer just enough flavor without being overwhelming. I'm also adding a small amount of freshly grated nutmeg to my Falernum to add a bit of complexity. Since I'm making this Falernum for my Key Lime Vegan Milk Punch, I'm going to be using key limes as my citrus. I will link the vegan key lime pie milk punch video in the description box below. I'm making a small batch here, so feel free to double or even triple this recipe. Mine will yield 6 ounces. This Falernum recipe will utilize both the zest and the juice. Since I am using these tiny key limes, I'm going to need about 10 of them. Most recipes use a rich simple syrup, but I found a semi-rich simple syrup to work best. I'm also using two types of sugar, turbinado sugar for its caramel flavor, as well as white sugar. All white sugar leaves the falernum a little too sweet, but all turbinado sugar offered way too much caramel. I'm using three tablespoons of white sugar and two tablespoons of the turbinado. To start this falernum off, I'm first going to toast the almonds and the cloves over low-medium heat for about 5 minutes, tossing regularly to make sure that the almonds are evenly toasted. These can burn pretty quickly, so keep an eye on them. Once the cloves and almonds have been evenly toasted, remove from the heat and let cool off completely. Next, I'm going to make my semi-rich simple syrup by combining 2 tablespoons of turbinado sugar, 3 tablespoons of white sugar, and 3 tablespoons of water in a saucepan and heat over low heat until all of the sugar dissolves. Once dissolved, set it aside and let it cool off completely before storing in the refrigerator. Now I will break off a 1.5 inch piece of ginger and peel it using a teaspoon. The skin of ginger is pretty bitter, so I want to make sure I remove it before infusing it into the rum. Once the ginger is peeled, I'm going to grate it and set it aside while I get to work on those limes. Next, I will zest all of my key limes. I love the aroma of key limes. They're so much more floral than regular limes. However you like to zest your limes, be careful not to include the bitter white pith to the zest. It's incredibly bitter. After all those limes have been zested, I'm going to go ahead and juice them. Even though I can't add the juice right away, without the lime peel intact, they tend to dry out pretty fast. Once they've all been juiced, I'm just going to cover the juice and store it in the fridge until I need it. While I have my microplane out, I'm going to grate about a quarter teaspoon of fresh nutmeg. Now that all our ingredients are prepped, we're ready to start making the falernum. To my jar with the lid, I'm going to add the lime zest, nutmeg, ginger, toasted almonds, and cloves. Now I'm just going to add three ounces of my overproof rum. Now I'll 
I'll screw on the lid and give this mixture a good shake to help the infusion get going. Now all that's left to do is to let it infuse for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the infusion has taken on a pretty green hue from the lime zest. I'm going to use a coffee filter to strain off the solids. I'm also going to press the solids to extract every last bit of liquid out of them. Then I'll also pass that through the coffee filter. Once the infusion has finished filtering, I'm going to add the syrup and then the lime juice, which was just shy of a quarter cup. Now I'll give it a good shake to combine and transfer it to a bottle with a lid and label it. While it doesn't have the most appealing color, it's beautifully fragrant and so, so good. You can taste all of the flavors in perfect harmony. I find the store-bought falernum to be really heavy on the clove with a lot of artificial lime flavor. The fresh lime zest and juice really brighten up this falernum. It's good enough to drink on its own. It kind of reminds me of green chartreuse. It went perfectly with my vegan key lime pie milk punch. I can't wait to use it in other cocktails. and I look forward to experimenting more with different variations of Falernum in the future. I hope that you found this video informative on how to customize your own Falernum at home. Please give this recipe a try and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It is so, so, so good and worlds better than the store-bought stuff. Thank you all so much for tuning in each week. We have hit another milestone of 300 subscribers. Thank you all so much for your continued support. I look forward to sharing another video with you all soon. Have a great week.